next um, conversation, actually it's not even a conversation because I'm going to sit back and watch and take notes, goes back to what I was saying about Michelle Obama saying that we need to make sure we're packing snacks. Um, we are going to see unusually long lines for a variety of reasons. Our system needs to be overhauled, but more importantly, there's going to be a record number of people voting. Um, and so be prepared to stay online. And you should bring a snack and you can bring a homemade snack. Um, and so we are so excited. I think she's like the resident higher heights chef um, who has the best hair, by the way. Uh, she will come a cooking whenever we ask. And you can't host a democracy house without having some food in that house. Because, you know, if we invited y'all to a house and there was no food. You know how we would talk about you? Um, our moms always made sure we had more food than we needed. Um, and I think that is the tradition of Black women. And so we are joined today by Amber Kroom. She is a pastry chef um, um, who took her passion and turned it into a purpose. Uh, she has been seen, you may have seen her on food networks, a variety of shows, Chopped, um, the Holiday Baking Show, which is one of my favorite shows. And so she's here today um, to whip up something that we can make, not only just to have around the house, but something that we might pack into our pocketbooks or our little brown bag as we go to vote over the next couple of days into Election Day. So Amber, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. This is awesome. I love, you know, joining the conversation um, whenever I am given the opportunity to join Higher Heights. Um, it's empowering, you know, what you guys are doing for Black women. So for me to actually get in on the conversation, you know, I couldn't say no to that. So that was very important for me, um, especially right around the corner for voting and getting everybody out. So what are we, what are we cooking today? So, so I make, make cooking or making. We are making and baking, so to speak. So of course, you know, we're gonna have these long lines. You know, unless you did absentee ballot, you know, you're gonna be sitting there for a while. So you need to bring yourself a snack that will stave off those hunger pains, those angry pains, those times when you need a snicker and you become a different person, you know, unless you get something to snack on. We're gonna make um, my take on coconut macaroons, but instead of the regular kind, we're going to make German chocolate. Um, these are some of my mom's favorite. And as we're going into the voting season, I couldn't help but, you know, think about my family and my origin and being from Birmingham, Alabama. Um, and my family, my mom and my aunt actually went to school with two of the young girls that were killed um, in the, the church bombing that happened. So... For me, you know, being able to vote means me honoring the sacrifices of my family, of, you know, my ancestors and people gave so much for us to do that. So I want to honor them with this recipe. And also it's simple, to, it's simple to make, really quick, and it's awesome to, to share, to share that love when you're out there. So we're going to take um, about seven ounces of shredded coconut, about three fourths cup of sugar, a pinch of salt, um, and six tablespoons of flour. And we're going to mix that up really nicely. Again, all these ingredients are easily accessible at your local grocery store, um, and it literally takes about five minutes to make. Once we get that mixed in, you're going to take your egg whites. I have five egg whites here. Just going to pour that in. And keep giving out a nice little mix. And it smells so good already. I'm not like a huge fan of coconut, but whenever I'm making this, I'm constantly <laughs> thinking about my mom and her request for German chocolate every birthday, every, you know, holiday function that we have. So I have to make it in some form. Um, and so, you know, giving these out to my family is something that I really love to do. And once you get that nice and mixed up, see, really easy, you're going to take about a cup of pecans. And when I was growing up, we had tons of pecan trees. So being younger and getting into my neighbor's yards and picking up pecans was something we did like all summer. And again, this is just taking me back, you know, to my childhood, which I loved like so much. Um, and that flavor, you can smell it. I'm going to add a little bit of um, almond extract to brighten that flavor. 
And if you're going to share this with people, you actually can just leave out the pecans if they have like a nut allergy um, and make it a little bit friendlier. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I wish you guys could smell it. It smells so good. So now that mixture is actually done. We're like halfway done already. So you're going to take a sheet pan and you're just going to spray it with a little bit of pan spray. Make sure your oven is at 350 degrees and it's nice and preheated. You can take you an ice cream scooper, a spoon, whatever you have in your house to kind of get some nice balls. You're going to just fill it up like that and place it. Make sure you give it a little bit, maybe about one to two inches of space between them. This mix, depending on how big you make them, can get you about 15 to 20 bite-sized bites of coconut macaron. Now, another reason why this is good to take to the poles is because that healthy fat in there from the coconut and the pecans, it's definitely going to satiate you. And then what we're going to do to it at the end is just going to put you in a happy place. So you're not even going to be that upset having to sit there and wait to vote. But I mean, it's, it's an honor to be able to do that anyway. So you just have to keep that in your mind, you know, when you're out there deciding on the future of your family <laughs> and your neighborhoods and, and people around you. And I think we're going to get about 12 out of this one. Perfect. And see, just like that. And we're done with that part. See? Got 12 coconut macarons in there. You just got to put it in your oven. And while that's going, I've taken some chocolate that I've melted down. You can use any kind of chocolate. I use a really good quality chocolate um, from Barona. This is about a 70% chocolate. But you can use anything. You can use Nestle, your deli, whatever you can get at the grocery store. If you do, when you're melting it, you're going to put it in the microwave and melt it for about 30 seconds. Just so you can get this fluid. If it's still a little bit thick, you're going to add a little bit of coconut oil to it. Not too much. Just a little bit so that you can get the viscosity to it. The next thing we're going to do is make sure you get your caramel ready. Now, I cheated a little bit. <laughs> um, you can make your caramel, but you can also use store-bought. Nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with store-bought. It's also easier to do if you, you're pressed on time and you just kind of want to make something quick. But just make sure as you get your mixture like this, and you can add that to the microwave too. Now, TV magic, da -da -da, we're done. And it is nice and big. And they're awesome and golden brown and ready to go. So I'm just gonna spread these out. They smell so good. I wish you guys could smell them. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take that caramel and just kind of bathe it a little bit. Just put it on top of each one. And just, it doesn't have to be, like, super pretty because it's just going to, like, coat the entire thing. And already, this should be making you happy. Look at all of this goodness. And it smells great. You smell the pecans that are nice and toasted and that coconut. And then you're adding this caramel to it. Nice dollops. You can be as generous as you want, <laughs> depending on how much you love caramel or dulce de leche. And just kind of put that on top. God, everybody in the line is going to love you if you're in the line just sharing this. And you can just send me a note saying thank you. <laughs> um, you're going to have your chocolate now. And you're just going to put it on top. Coat it. You know, our German chocolate cake has that chocolate and coconuts and pecans. Now we're just making a little bite. So you're going to just elevate that. Now, again, if you're not using pecans in there, this last step that I do, you know, don't do that. But these are easy as good. It's like a turtle, you know, the little candy turtles, but with coconut inside. And just going to put that there. And as a little bit of garnish, little pecans in there. like a little power bite. I love them so much, especially if you're like at home and you kind of want just something sweet, you know, having this in your cabinet, you can pop it out really easy and it's perfect. 
And there we go. And once we finish that, you're just gonna let it cool and set up and you have your German chocolate bite. Nice and easy and everyone in the line is gonna love it for it. Great, that look, oh, and you're sharing. <laughs> <laughs> and you're sharing the love. And that's, that's another important thing too when you're sitting there, you know, um, it's not gonna just be about you when you're voting and it's not gonna just be about you when you're in the line. So engage the people that are around you and learn about the people that are in your community and the things that people are gonna be affected by this new you know, administration that's gonna come in and what they need. And so, you know, sharing the love through food, that's so that's a gateway, that's a door, you know, to open up a conversation. And you know that that has that is the tradition of Black women, um, and particularly you, um, you know, being a daughter of the South and Alabama in particular, which obviously was very important around um, the civil rights movement. And oftentimes, the the women, although we were the architects of that civil rights movement, and we were out marching and and protesting, um, and and advocating on our behalf, we also were. We were feeding the movement, right? Um, we were we were bake, baking, um, doing baking goods to sell, to um, invest in the movement. All of your pound cakes were birthed in this generation. Like it really, really was. You know, being able to make those things and you know share it to the people that are you know going through, people that have you know sacrificed to Boston. You know, just needing a little bit of joy. You know, a good pound cake will lift somebody's spirits really, really quickly. And um, I think in the South, we definitely know that. We know what it means to be able to share our food and, and it being a sign of love. You know, I, I love you. If I feed you, I love you. Like, that's, that's definitely a, a staple in my house. Speaking of pound cake, so my, um, so I grew up uh, in in a tradition where my I had strong black women who were very civic minded. Even though my great grandmother and grandmother didn't have the right to vote for most of their lives, um, but their big thing was they passed down as a good black woman does like a pound cake recipe, right? Um, and it was like the coveted piece of paper that was a secret. Um, so yeah. my brother, Kurt, and I, I'm, I'm, the baker. <laughs> I'm the baker of the family, but my brother and I both, all three, all three of us, bake but my brother my middle brother and I realized at one point that this coveted secret was like a regular pound cake right <laughs> like it, and it was no, nothing different to it it was like don't you give my recipe to anybody um a now, pound cake that has a pound of sugar and a pound of butter and a pound of <laughs> there literally was like the way they um did the batter was slightly different that I guess maybe that was the secret and we yeah. made ours a little fluffier than dense but I was, but but share a little bit about what's your 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 take on a pound cake like for me I love you know a little bit of a lighter pound cake mainly because I want to not feel like I need to take a nap after I eat it you know um and I also love to add ice cream to mine like I rarely have a piece of pound cake that doesn't have, you know, vanilla bean ice cream or lemon ice cream and then some berries on it. Like, that is my quintessential way to actually eat pound cake. And so I like to kind of play around. Like, you know, there are reverse methods of, you know, making. Your, your basic one is, you know, creaming your, your butter and your sugar until it's like nice and fluffy and add your eggs and add your flour and boom, like, you know, you can do the reverse method. Um, in the opposite direction doing your wet and then you're dry and it definitely does give you like a different texture you know there are so many ways to actually do that but that is my favorite because it does come out lighter and you know the longer pound cake you sit the drier it gets you ever had a brick of a pound cake <laughs> so for me you know adding sometimes sour cream or adding you know buttermilk or the seven up you know adding those elements to it definitely adds moisture and lights it up. So those are the kind of things that I like to put on it. Yeah. And so I think to, to end our, our conversation, it's some a conversation we've been having with you since you've been joining us is, um, you know, the work you do has been directly impacted by COVID-19, right? Uh, and Higher Heights, you know, recently released uh, some a report, uh, a poll of 560, 506 likely Black women voters. Uh, and what we found is that Black women are anxious about the outcome of this election that COVID-19 is at the top of our minds when we wake up in the morning and when we go to bed for a variety of reasons that has impacted us financially, 
um, if, um, personally or someone in our family. Obviously, we've been affected by it by, from a health perspective um, and the economy. So share a little bit about um, you and your network about, you know, like, why are you voting? You know, is COVID-19 at the top of your mind about, you know, what the direction of the country is going to be? Yeah, of course, especially being for me in the food service industry, you know, we were highly impacted, you know, and while people, you know, really, really wanted to still be able to go out and still be able to eat, you know, they were buying from the grocery store more. So you weren't, you know, necessarily having these really big gatherings where you're needing, you know, a six-year cake or you're needing, you know, mm. all of these fabulous desserts. And so for me, we need people that are going to look out for us. Like the fact that you know, small businesses didn't get a bulk of the, the business loans that were given out or the PAU that was given out to business like that, that made no sense to me. Like why are huge corporations, huge chain restaurants getting all this money when you have, I literally have three friends here in the city of Baltimore who had to close their doors because they could not sustain the COVID. So for us, we do need people who, when there is a crisis, you're gonna look out for the smaller businesses who are impacted the most, not a big corporation. So yeah, that's definitely on our mind. And for me, as well as you know, all of the black women that I associate myself with that are in this industry, we need to put somebody in office that's gonna look out for us. And that's important. Yeah, and you, you said something about gatherings. Like, so part of your business is people buy things when they're doing big corporate events, but frankly, things around the house, um, special occasions. Uh, so we're reimagining what holidays look like. Um, that's, that's definitely one of the biggest things, too. Like, I feel like that's kind of what sustained a lot of us during this, is that people still wanted to be able to celebrate, you know? So they were having a lot of virtual celebrations. So instead of them still making stuff, they were actually putting money into the smaller businesses and to, you know, the chefs that were doing it from their homes and, you know, ordering from us. I have so many friends that did kind of, you know, survive just because of people saying, you know, what, I'm going to support you here. I don't necessarily need this, but I'm going to support you and I'm going to have, you know, a Mother's Day brunch. I need a cake for it. You know, we're going to do it via Zoom. Can you give me that? You know, so... Those are the definite things that um, I feel like were a really big way that people have decided to transition to celebrate during COVID, a lot of virtuals, um, and still being able to have that plate of food, you know, and celebrate with your family was um, the things that are being reimagined now. Well, you know, election season comes around right after Halloween. So pumpkin or not to pumpkin, pumpkin you spice, know not to pumpkin spice. <laughs> I love pumpkin spice, but I love to make my own. I love to actually use pumpkin. Um, I love, you know, anise and cinnamon and nutmeg and cloves. And I feel like calling it pumpkin spice, it needs to be called something else. Call it an autumn spice, you know, because you can use it in apples. You can use it in pears. You can use it in anything. It shouldn't just be pumpkin. So, eh, yes and no to pumpkin spice. I do love a good pumpkin, but, you know, it has its place. I will say that. Well, thank you for, well, we should say thank you for allowing us to stop by your kitchen here at hashtag Black Women Vote Democracy House. Uh, we certainly could not have had um, built a house without having you here. So we look forward to you continuing. You know, we might have to have you back to figure out what our holiday spreads are going to be. And it's going to be, you know, if we're all Zooming for the holidays this year, it will be the pre the presentation is going to be key. So it's like, look what I'm, look what I made. Look what and I you made. know what, maybe, maybe that needs to be in the next one. Let me show you how to decorate, how to elevate that cake you just did. Let's do a little something with that. I think that would be a great one. Great. Well, follow Amber Kroom on um, Instagram, and she's exactly right. Um, during COVID-19, we need to be innovative in um, thinking about how we support Black-owned businesses like Amber um, Kroom and, um, and her colleagues. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me.